College along with Michael Lloyd. And Claggett, who got a brief rest, will come back in. St. Louis, the big question mark has been obviously schedule strength. They beat a Bethune Cookman, a Sacramento State. However, they beat a good Bradley team and they beat a good Southern Illinois team up in Saluki land, and that's never easy to do. Rich Aaron's always got a solid club up there. Charlie Spoonar's teams have always played good defense. They're only allowing 59 points. It's 11th in the nation right now. Massachusetts will test that. He did a great job at Southwest Missouri State. Seven consecutive years into the NCAA and NIT at postseason bids. Dingle, shot clock is down to 12. Padilla. Forced that one a little bit, and a rebound ripped down by Jeff Harris. Harris had great inside position. You know, five of the last six years he went to the NCAA when he was with Southwest Missouri State. Only 6-5, really skied for that one. Had great inside position. It was a two-man game. Harris. Well blocked it. Very difficult for them to get scored inside. And especially if Tamby was here, because he is one of the premier shot blockers in America. There it is right here. There's Rowe rotating over. They had 20 blocks. That's remarkable. Some teams won't get 20 all year long. The three drained by Robinson. He's the least likely to shoot it. Well, they said they're going to allow him to step away and shoot the three because he has pretty good range, Mike, and they feel he'll pull out Rowe with some of their big people. He had only hit two of seven all year long. Nearly another steal, but Wright maintains possession. A three-point shot so big in college hoops. Go to Lou Rowe when things get tough. Back to Padilla, Travieso. And a nice job by Harris. His second straight big rebound. Now they're playing hard. Nice pass by Clinton. In and out for Turner. What was the emotion in Oh, I love intensity. Electricity, Mike. They are really pumped here at the Keel Center. And it's because of this guy, Spoon Hour. The Spoon Man's got him rocking and rolling. Spins out. Oh, and that looked like it could have been St. Louis basketball. Dingle, the last guy to touch it. Last year was the first time to the NCAA since 1957. We're still some guys shooting with two hands in 57, weren't there? I was a baby man. Yeah. <laughs> you may have to go back another 50 years. Uh -oh. It's 12 11. UMass by a point. Here's the kid that can make something happen. Michael Williams. Dingle shoots the three. Dingle for three and drained it. Dingle, jingle, dingle. Carl Turner running the club. This is Highmark. Trying to get right in Highmark's face so he doesn't get a good look at the hoop. Clang it. Forced it. And that one clanged. The rim on the way by. They stressed today at their workout perimeter defense. They said we want John John Calipari said to his club, we want them to have to drive, dribble, and penetrate. We don't want them to look and get the three. Kellogg working with the Williams. Dingle and Bright up front along with Norval for you, man. Three for Williams. I'll tell you, he's a primetime player. Made some big threes in their win over Maryland. You talk about schedule strength. How would you like to play Arkansas, Kansas, and Maryland in your first three out of four games? 
They don't duck anybody, do they? No, oh, they want to play the best. They still got games coming up with Louisville and Penn. And Penn is a good basketball team. Another force by Clegg. Good call, Mike. He's forcing his shot. He's not getting it off the rhythm of the offense. Kellogg hustling back, doesn't have the numbers, so he holds up. The Minutemen by seven with 11.24 to go first half. You see, they got a lot of criticism when he signed them. But he's a steady player. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's a team leader. John Calipari says he still laughs about what one commentator said, that it was a wasted scholarship, and there's Norville scoring inside. Norville very active, a little high-low action. Size certainly a problem for St. Louis. 20 to 11, and the Billikens would like something good to happen for them on this trip. Massachusetts, a very good road basketball team. John Calipari said he credits that to working for Paul Evans at Pittsburgh, who taught him how to structure. Timeout, 10-15. Yes, they say, they play with emotion. They play with passion. They guard. They attack the board's rebound. I said, now let's have them say they can shoot the ball. Boy, they're good dribbling the ball. They're good passers. And those are things that we could improve on. And I told them, and you know what? Every kid went back and got better. And that's what we needed to do. And I, I hope that we can continue on that trend and do it in practice every day. Mike. And that's why they're one of the best teams in the country, because they did get better. Mike, I told you today, he's one of the great practice coaches in the country. They really execute. They work so hard at practice and all their drills. Williams. Won't go, but the tip by Dante Bright. Dante Bright's got that tremendous lift and bounce off the floor. Bright has six in the lead. It's grown to 11. They have doubled St. Louis's score. And they're not really bigger across the front. Like, you look at them now with Weeks and certainly playing uh, right now Bright on the floor with them. And they got Nunez out there getting some minutes. Rigoberto Nunez. St. Louis facing a 10-0 run. They need a bucket. Very quick pass, and they play so well as a team on a defensive end. Look at Kellogg taking the challenge against Clagan. Clagan beat him right there, but they had some help on him. Missed the shot and one and out, except Massachusetts lost the ball. This call is going to be changed. Yeah, Jimmy Barr running right over. Ted Valentine, they hug each other. That's good officiating. Well, he's one of the best. You talk about Barr, you talk about Valentine. They're certainly two of the best in the game. So UMass basketball. I think it's really important for St. Louis not to get blown out here today. Because now the critics will start in terms of who did you play, does it mean anything? Waldman for three. Just nicked the front of the rim. A little bit out of his range. Rode to bright, nearly lost it. Kellogg for three. Over the backboard, that'll be out to St. Louis. So deep at the guard slot. We talked about it at the top of the show. Kellogg, Williams, Travieso, Padilla. And if you got strong backboard play, that means great shot selection usually. It means that you're going to be a good rebound in position. Look at this right now. Over three, one for seven, three point range. Not going to get it done like that. And they make more than a third of their points from three point range. Campbell trying to get something inside. Nice spin move. He'll draw the foul. Campbell takes the ball to the goal. Quick move by the interior. Dante Bright will pick up the person. I'll tell you one thing. You get into the great Midwest, you're not getting any automatics when you play the likes of DePaul and Memphis and Cincinnati. And it's going to get harder. Oh, yeah. You add Louisville and Houston. You add, for example, Southern Mississippi, Tulane. They drop out Dayton. Ten solid clubs. They should make Mike Sly. I met him today. He's the commissioner of the great Midwest. Has done a great job. They should make him the commissioner of the new conference as well. Claggett's going to get a breather as Carlos McCauley, number 12, is in the lineup. He started two years ago. So they got four guards, Mike, that can play with most people. When you talk Claggett and Turner, and certainly uh, you look at Walman and add McCauley to the ranks. Campbell has two points, two out of three from the line. That breaks a long drought, a 10-0 run, and it's 22 to 12. I love guard play. Massachusetts has really quieted the crowd. This crowd is so used up, ready to explode. It won't take much, Dick, to get them back in it either. Double threes and get them rocking. The that range it. these guys have. They go to that one one three, trapping out of it. Dingle helping Kellogg. This is Williams. I like Williams. He can make the big play. He can be sensational. Rowe, very unselfish player. This time he's double teamed. Charlie's Poonauer arguing the call. He's not going to win that one. Good challenge. So I told
Torrio resplendent. Spoon ball. Look at him. Look He's at him styling tonight. Hey, he was a manager in high school. He was a manager in high school, but had great drive and desire. Shot clock doesn't recycle, of course. It's down to 12. Behind the back dribble, the steal to McCauley. He'll pull up and miss it. Waldman with a rebound, fouled by Rowe. I'll tell you, Massachusetts really impressed me against a good Maryland team when they got into all kinds of foul trouble. Camby went out, Rowe went out, and they hung in and beat Jammin' Joe, who's not ordinary, Mr. Smith. No, he isn't. He was big against St. Louis last year. That was the key reason why Maryland sent St. Louis home in the first round. Non-shooting foul. Yeah, there's the open three. But they've got a foul before it, and the lead moving screen. Scott hit Waldman, I think. Waldman. He'll get his first. 8.56 to go in the first half, and we have a couple of leather lungs who are sitting directly <laughs> behind us. They're going to try to make something happen with this defense. Massachusetts very well schooled against pressure. This is Padilla. Trying to go down one one three. There's the tandem and the rotation. Comes the Waldman nearly got the steal, knocked it out of bounds. Charlie Spoonauer turned down some really strong jobs that were offered him. Iowa State came a call in. Oklahoma was interested. Kansas State. 8.37 to go first half. Dingle goes to the baseline, tries to feed it inside, and did get it inside. And Tyrone Weeks out of Philadelphia scores. He had a double double against West Virginia. He's been slow coming around. They want him to work a little harder if he wants to earn playing time. He's starting to work. 24-13. UMass in control. They so well defensively. Campbell. Nice move. Can't get the shot. Lou Rowe got the rebound after messing up the timing on the shot. Great help by Rowe defensively. Handled the ball well. Oh, nice. That's great basketball. That's unselfish basketball. That's winning basketball. That's team basketball. Weeks dumped it to Rowe. It's 26-13. So active defensively. Waldman got it. Live by the three, baby. Let it fly. It's bomb time. You can make up a lot of ground in a hurry. Here's Williams back the other way and swish. He loves to make the big shot. He's won a number of games at the buzzer. I asked him last night at dinner. I said, how many games you won? I said, I don't know. He said, I beat a few clubs, North Carolina. He's won Oklahoma. five and sent another one into overtime. They'd like him to show that kind of intensity and accuracy the rest of the time. All the time. And believe me, he knew he won five. <laughs> no, I'm sure he did. Claggett's been on the bench a while. They'll get him back in at the next break. Another three won't go for Highmark. Weeks giving him some real positive minutes down inside. He'll get some playing time without Camby here. Williams, nice move to get three in the lane. A lot of contact, no whistle. Ooh, no whistle there. Letting him play. was a tough call to make. 6-14 to go on the half. Teen Minutemen. Watch the great team concept right here. Watch them play together in Massachusetts as a unit. Move the basketball. Freeze it. Right here. We're going to watch this triangle in operation. And we're going to see the ball kicked right to here for a layup from Rowe. There's the ball entered. There's the dump down. And there's Mr. Rowe. Squares his body. The great dish. I mean, just great execution. Very unselfish. High percentage shot. Very 
Well, reminiscent of the kind of play you see at North Carolina, Duke, and Indiana. St. Louis has hit only three of ten three-point shots on the season. They've hit 45% on the year. And they need to shoot better than that. Well, they're getting relentless pressure right in their face, like defensively. Foul was on Padilla. You know, you think about teams that were questioned in terms of strength of schedule. Clemson was one, but they responded to the challenge, beating Duke at Duke. Stanford's another, but they went down to Virginia, beat Virginia at Virginia, and blew out Wisconsin at home. So maybe St. Louis is hoping to do the same. On the other side, Mass is hoping to be number one in the nation. If UCLA can get bumped off tonight. Claggett's back into the ball game, working in the backcourt with Waldman. There's the screen. And comes out with it. Contact here, and Waldman gets it to Robinson, who tries for 15. Oh, he's on fire. Now his name is not Waldman. It's not Highmore. It's not Waldman. It's Robinson. Robinson has eight. The lead is cut to seven. Give him 10 for the night. That's enough for the scouting ball, huh? Absolutely. You go fire that scout. Scott Highmark. John Calipari has done one of the great rebuilding jobs in basketball. You and I talked about it. It's amazing to think of Massachusetts up there with all the big programs in America. A team from New England had never been rated number one until they did it at the end of November. And a Massachusetts athletic team, any sport, had never been ranked number one nationally. Incredible what he has done in his tenure there. Good wing players, they have good execution on the wings. Kellogg can't get it inside. Bright hand. Tried to bank it. A row offensive rebound foul on the way back up. Row is certainly the difference so far. They just cannot handle him around the basket. Cincinnati and DePaul coming up. That's tomorrow night, 8.30 start Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. And uh, Cincinnati's another one of those teams that have played a tough schedule. Oh, really a tough schedule. They've got five losses. I think they'll be the best team in the great Midwest. But Lizelle Durden starts finding the shot again and ports in an outstanding diaper dandy. This kid is just such a good, tough kid. Last foul was on Robinson and Rowe drains the three. In addition to, or the free throw, in addition to everything else, he's an 82% free throw shooter. There is nothing about his game that you can't admire. Play so hard defensively as well. They're going to Atlantic City for their next game against LaSalle. You see a lottery pick, Dick? Oh, I think right now, without a doubt, I love him. I love everything about his game. A lot depends on Mike and who comes out early. That sort of changes the complexion with so many good young players. Yeah, but you see, he reminds me in his intensity, the fact that he plays hard all the time, of a Grant Hill, and I don't think you can you can rate that too highly. I could agree with you more about that. Guys that come to play all the time. Here's the kid that's got to get on fire, Claggett. He's trying to create his own shot off the dribble move. And they've done a great... Oh, what a job! Robinson! David Robinson, he points it off! Holy cow! What a tip! He has 13 points! Hey, maybe that's the real David. We didn't know. He shot misses, but there's Lou Rowe, and he oh. missed it bright. What a follow by Dante Bright. Oh, oh man. There's some excitement here tonight. He has eight. That's St. Louis back the other way. This is Turner. That's why he was so highly rated out of Dunbar. Isolation clear out. Nice drive by Turner. He'll draw the foul from Bright. That's his second. Watch this tip by Robinson. I mean, are you sure this is not the real David Robinson? This might be the real David Robinson coming back playing college. Oh. <laughs> and I'll take a look at Dante Bright. He says, anything you can do, I can do better. There he goes. Can you top that, baby? 
34-23. Turner, very quick, good ball handler. Charles Kunar really loves his game. Loves his quickness, as you mentioned, his shooting ability. Very explosive. He only started one game this year. He's had four and double figures out of Suitland, Maryland, as you saw. Went, Went to San, San Jacinto. Yes, San Jacinto would have beat so many guys to the major college level. Walter Hits Barry. the free throw, 34. And Joe Theismann, Chris Mortensen, Leslie Vizzer, Andrea Kramer, Greg Garber, and Mark Malone, along with Bird the Wonder Pig. And the one thing I'd like to see is they just add up all those salaries and put that stat up. Oh, try to top that. They really are the best. They're so informed. I mean, they inform you with so much knowledge. It's incredible. Chris Berman does a great job as the leader of the gang. Dante Bright brings it up to Kellogg. They immediately get down to row and try to isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. He finally misses something. That's the one concern a lot of pro teams have. Can he step out and knock down the open shot? Carl Turner, the droid. Carl Turner. Turner. It was Turner. Great job. You and I were talking off the air. This is not an easy environment to bring a team on the road to get a win tonight. The way this club is so emotionally ready to play. This will be a special win for Massachusetts. Robinson, great hit fake, then missed the shot. Loose ball. Turner comes out with it. Trying to cut into a seven-point lead. Williams comes down. Highmark has really been off tonight, and here is a foul on Robinson as he reached in. I'll tell you, you come on a road, Mike, and you come without Marcus Camby, and you play in this environment, 22,000, an unbeaten team, trying to get some respect and notoriety. You win here. You are a special team. Derek Kellogg out of Springfield, Massachusetts. Back into the ballgame. Nunez checks in for the first time. Nunez passed on the shot. Calipari goes to his bench, not afraid to use a lot of people. Williams for three. Planked it up short, right for the follow. White's been so tough inside. He's got that great electricity when he bounces off the floor. Dante Bright has 10. 36-27 with a minute 48 left in the half. So many weapons. Inside out. A great drop step, but he missed the shot. What a move to get open. It just wouldn't fall for him. I'll tell you, he's playing well. Williams back the other way. The basket counts, and he's fouled. What about that quickness? They bring it to the sideline. He just exploded to the goal. And we've got an injury at the other end of the court. That's Robinson. He went down hard after he took that scoop shot. Wow, let's hope he is not hurt seriously. Especially since he's just played so brilliantly tonight. Oh, he was so pumped up. But he has not moved from that position since he went down. And Charlie Spoonar, letting the referees hear it, he thought he was fouled at that end. We're going to watch it right here, number 30. There goes the crossover. The spin move. Now he hits the deck. Oh, Ooh, wow. Never had a chance to brace himself for the fall. Ooh, it looked like the side of his face hit. I think he's going to be all right. It's sort of like a fighter getting a thunderous right cross. Yeah, it looks like not a knee injury or an ankle injury. Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. Trainer taking him off. Well, it's good to see he's had a great first half. Jeff Schwerfiger, the trainer, last year when they were 6-0, and he said they're going to be about 19-2, 20-1 when we head to Cincinnati, and we're going to get in the NCAA tournament. He was right. What a prognosticator. Del DeFoss at halftime report coming up. Uh, another shock for Louisville. UConn, are they still unbeaten? Scores and highlights from around the country. And, of course, by that time, we'll be able to uh, at least give you an indication of what's going on UCLA-Oregon. I guess they play tonight, probably 10 o'clock Eastern. I think Oregon's going to give them a lot of trouble. I really do. With Orlando Williams. Williams and Tenya Wilkins in the backcourt. Billy Bean's got a solid backcourt. Williams missed the free throw. The follow won't go either for weeks. Loose ball and bodies going everywhere. Wow. Look at this. Whoa. Williams tied up with Campbell and the elbows flying. I mean, you talk about scrapping and hustling and clawing and getting after it. No place for the meek. And now we just had some Yahoo stand up in the front row and throw pennies on the court. That's absurd. That's absurd. You want to take a guy, you throw 
throws something on the floor. Get him out of the arena. Don't need that. Get him out of the arena. Teddy Valentine right down on the floor. The referee jumps right into the action. I mean, what fans don't understand when they do that, they can hurt the kids they're rooting for, and that's just stupid. You can hurt anybody, and that's no, there's no place for it in college athletics, professional athletics. The shame of it was, it was done right in front of a security guard, and he never even said a word to the guy. He just stared at him. Well, back to action with a minute 24 to go, 35 seconds on the shot clock. Burden on the home team to make sure that this place is under control. We just slap him with a technical. Rowe trying to inbound, does to Dingle. I bring it to Lou Rowe now inside. Spread the court and bring it to number 15. He's working against Harris. Harris trying to communicate, talking on a defensive end. I slide Lou Rowe to the interior, get him on a box. The post and do what he does best. Shot clock at 14. Rowe wants to give it up to Kellogg, who's a very solid guard. There's nothing spectacular about him, but he does the right things most of the time. He doesn't turn it over. I'd slide Rowe down inside. Williams says, no, I'm shooting it, Jack. Williams buries the three with three seconds left on the shot clock. It's 41 27. Great execution. Use the clock. Take the high percentage shot. Williams knocks it down. Williams has 10. Dingle forced another one. He's only had one real good look at the three. Offensive rebound. Shot will not go for Donnie Campbell, but the follow up. Harris with that good effort, second effort. Been the leading rebounder the last two games for this club. Cuts the lead back to 12. But St. Louis couldn't keep that little spurt going. Two years ago, this would have been a turnover. It's a new rule. You can yeah. dribble the ball. Silly rule, isn't yeah, it? You can stay here all day. How boring could that be? Yeah, it's That's great. boring. Takes a lady. Hard to play in some good defense. Kellogg will have to take the shot out of the corner as, this, as the clock expires in the first half. And Charlie Spooner are up yelling at the officials. He wanted to foul on that rebound. That's the end of the first half with the score. The number four ranked team in the nation, Massachusetts, leading St. Louis 41 to 29. Now for the Delta Fawcett halftime report, let's go back to Chris Fowler. Chris, Mike, thank pretty you. good first half, wasn't it? Well, it was really exciting. The bottom line is, as you and I talk, they did a great job, Massachusetts, taking away the three-point shot. Never gave them the great look. They were right up in their Absolutely. face. Their excellent perimeter defense certainly made them shoot four for 13. Robinson was the guy that really stood out, though, for St. Louis. He really played well. He was excellent. We're going to see a little penetration right here. There's the dump down the shot. No good. And Mr. Robinson comes up with a loose ball, kicks it back out. And now Wolman's going to dish it off. And Robinson with the head fake steps into the three-point area, knocks it down, did a great job. And on the other side, Lewis Rowe showed why he's an All-American, gets the ball in deep. There's the little jump hook across the lane. He was outstanding in the first half, five for eight. Here's the story. St. Louis shooting only 10 of 31 in the first half from three-point range, only four of 13. And that's UMass defense, not the poor shooting of St. Louis. And points inside, 22 to 8 in favor of the Minutemen. These are the three guys who have to make the threes. They haven't done it. Claggett, one-fourth of his season's total. Highmark's been shut out. Waldman has five points. That's about right where he should be for a half. But you know with that outside game, they need to have more from him, too. Well, the bottom line in that case, Derek Claggett didn't get any really good looks. I believe he had one, one where he had a and good look it. at the basket. See, they're right up in his face, making him give the ball up or put it to the deck. Great game plan designed by John Calipari against the three-point shooters. Dante Bright had a solid first half, five for six. The only problem if you're a perimeter team like this, if the other team comes out and makes it difficult for you to shoot them and you don't have the inside game, it really hurts. But Robinson is at least giving them some of that. Waldman, the runner, had it blocked right in his face by Padilla. Edgar Padilla with some nice defense. And now Lou Rowe has it bounce off his hands out of bounds. Edgar Padilla, what an interesting story, Mike. His mom and dad both are deaf. They don't speak in the home. His mom speaks, but she speaks Spanish. And yet he does such an outstanding job in school. Well, he grew up speaking Spanish and signing because of that uh, handicap for his parents. Now he speaks and writes perfect English. Dingle from 26. Claggett. Hey, excuse me, Claggett. Claggett knocks it down. The 26 feet threw me off there for a second. <laughs> Waldman knocks it out of bounds. 
That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for a wake-up ball from Claggett. They need Irwin's jumper. 41 to 32, and it's just incredible how quickly a three-point shot can get you back in the ball game. Well, just asked Les Robinson yesterday in that big win over North Carolina. Dingle goes out, and Norville comes in from Massachusetts. The D and Kellogg, the guards. Post up inside, drop the ball down into row on a box. He's working hard against Donnie Campbell inside. Campbell trying to play him tough. Good defense. Campbell with a pick. Did a great job of fronting him. They're getting some help from the weeks. Charlie Spoonauer is such an excellent defensive coach. His teams are so well drilled. Leibniz got some shake and bake off the dribble as well. Love to get flag it free for another one, especially since he hit the first one. I mark as well. They gotta get him involved. Look. Robinson had his shot blocked. That was the stuff by Norville. Out there, they love blocking shots. Had 20 against West Virginia. Spoonar said we can get that in three years. And Camby isn't even here. Green team two. He has 14 points. The lead is back to 11. Kellogg trying to deny the ball to flag it. Now they switch. This is Highmark. Kellogg on him. The runner won't go. Highmark. Kellogg with a rebound. Highmark still getting the zip. Still shut out. Padilla for three. In and out. Rowe with a tough rebound working against Campbell. Out of bounds to Massachusetts. The row Joe Smith and company when they played Maryland. There's Lou Rowe. I mean, you talk about a warrior. You talk about a guy that's a fighter and a scrapper. He's got a great heart. Me. He can play for me any day of the week. Here's a reach in on Claggett. They play LaSalle. LaSalle has a great three point shooter. Kareem Towns. Speedy Morris's club. They play him Saturday down in Atlantic City, bringing home uh, Massachusetts in front of all of Lou Rose people. We're going to call it on Donnie Campbell instead of Claggett. Two on Campbell. Campbell works hard defensively. Good, tough defensive guy. So is Robinson. Yeah, they got some talent on this ball. Court. Robinson matched up with Norville. And as you said, Dick, they may be playing the number one team in the country. Norville down low, eight on the shot clock, trying to back in. Dante Bright has had a good ball game, misses that one. A little more intensity from St. Louis here in the second half. I'll tell you, they're not backing down. He wants to get the three off. Blocked by Norville. A lot of body contact on the way, and this has been a very physical game. Very tough for them to take the ball at the basket against Massachusetts. There's Claggett. Choney can drive as well. And there's the rejection. Get it out of here, Norville says. Does this remind you of some Big Ten games we've seen? Oh, Bodies flying. Very physical. Oh, great. Step. I mean, this guy's like Barish Nicole for shorts. Look at him right here. He's exploded. Boom. I mean, Dante Wright, Dunbar High superstar, was first team All American in the USA Today selections. Foul was on Robinson. That's his third, and he has to sit down with 16 29 to go. Charlie Spoonar trying to protect him a little bit in the three-point play will make it 46-34. Yeah, so Massachusetts Dick has had an answer every time St. Louis has made a little run. Yeah, every time they made that run, they've come up with the big play. Fight them down. This is Jeff Harris who had a good first half. Loose ball. Knocked into the backcourt. Oh, Padilla, nice play. save to Kellogg. What a great play. Give the assist to Padilla. I mean, that's just great team hustle in basketball. They communicated with the ball on the floor. Padilla said, I'll get it. And did a great job. 48-34. Getting to danger time right now for St. Louis. Waldman had it blocked by Padilla. Knocked away inside. 
Is it a foul or just knocked out of bounds? Knocked out of bounds, I believe. Knocked out. Boy, and the St. Louis fans unhappy. They'd like to see a whistle go in there. Lando Williams buries the early three for the Ducks. Right now, that's the lead for Oregon, a game of interest to Minutemen fans. Back to Dick and Mike. Hey, it's been a big year for Ducks, hasn't it? Hey, I'll tell you one thing, Chris. You mentioned the Ducks. Certainly in football, they did a great job. But, Chris, watch out for those Ducks, baby, especially with Orlando Williams. Take a look here. Carolina goes down. Arkansas goes down. If UCLA might go down, Mass moves all the way up. And Kansas was fifth. That's the team that beat Mass. Dick, just when it seems that they're on the verge of being blown out, but they haven't been able to get the next one. Walden with that squared up body, got the good look at the goal. He was a solid point guard when he played at UNLV. 15, 28 to go in the game. 48, 37. Highmark's the guy that's got to get a little active offensively. He's won the point. Kellogg against Claggett. Trying to find Rowe and can't. Shot clock at six. Now he's got LaRoe. Three. Just oh. so smooth. What can you say, Mike? He's absolutely the three S man. He's super scintillating sensational. He's got to shoot it. Everybody knows he's got to shoot it. Three seconds left on the shot clock, and it's like he's in practice. 50 to 37. I'm on just going to get a low mark tonight, even though he gets a high mark academically, a 4.0 student. My kind of guy, guy that does it both classroom and on a basketball court, but struggling tonight. Well, you had a 4.0, one each year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's giving me a break. Overachiever. 50-37, Massachusetts in control, but not comfortably ahead with a three-point shot. They really know how to execute. They say, well, I don't know if he can shoot the ball from deep. I don't know. All I know is he knows how to win. Well, people rely too much on, you know, a guy 6'7", 220, and it looks like Luro's got a cut near his eye. Take a look what at a the battle this was. There's the ball going up on a glass. There goes Norville. He gets stripped. There goes Luro. He gets nailed. And now a little woofing going on. the technical was because he turned around and faced up with Campbell. He really does have a bad cut. Of course, he's got to come out till that cut stops. Once it stops bleeding, he can re-enter the ball game. This year, that new rule, the jersey certainly has to have some saturation in terms of blood. If it doesn't, they... Or unless he's got the open wound exactly, like he does the now. Open wound, exactly. But John Calipari is going to take all the time he can to see if they can uh, stop this from bleeding and get him back in the ball game. You talk about all Americans, guys, when you talk about super players, you got to include Rowe up there with Joe Smith and company, Corliss Williamson, Rasheed Wallace. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no, uh, no doubt that this kid belongs in the top five players in the country. He's oh. just a great player. Because he does it on both sides. There's so many great guys play on one side of the floor. And I haven't seen him loaf a second. And I've oh, seen no. him play several games. Not one second have I seen him take off. Mike, the same thing in practice. John Calipari asking, asking some questions. I'm sure, uh, one, why did we get the technical? after they committed the foul. He's so prepared. I mean, he's so active on that sideline, in on every play, pours his heart into his team. Hey, we got some news. Academically, we talked about it on SportsCenter. They did an unbelievable job this past sem semester. I found out from some of the players, five guys are probably going to be on the honor roll average or better. Now, Padilla is shooting the technical, so there must be another technical called. They announced that Lou Rowe was called for the technical. There must be one, therefore, against St. Louis. They might have called a double technical. We didn't get word on it. Unlaw 
just right here, Mike. Oh, Padilla. Padilla uh, shot the personal fouls because Rowe was injured. This is the technical right here. Now Claggett will shoot the technical. Padilla comes off the bench to shoot him for Rowe. And you can designate a free throw shooter for someone who was injured. St. Louis gets the ball, though. They get the, the technical. ball. But they're down now by 14, Dick, and this is the point where they need to make something happen. They can't afford, even with a great three-point shooting, to fall further behind than that. they got to have a spurt. I think the spurt's got to happen defensively, but it's very difficult to make it happen. With the Flag, it tries to no-look feed, and they throw it away. Michael Williams back the other way. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense the way he attacked. Padilla walks. Just shuffled that pivot foot, trying to make his move. Great head fake. Calipari is furious. He's yelling, Edgar, shoot the rock, baby. Shoot it. He was squared up. Let it fly. Carl Turner brings it up with 13.39 to go. The way things are going, looks like a big game for the Atlantic 10. Absolutely. Temple winning that first game over Marquette. This conference has certainly come a long way in a few years, hasn't it? Oh, really done a great job. Flaggett, who has not had much of a night, and that's typical of what he's done. He really forced that one. Had no business taking that shot. He's got to utilize the screen a little more. Trying to shoot it without the screen. They rotate over to get great help. Williams and Padilla working in the backcourt for John Calipari. He's got such an excellent rotation with his perimeter people. With Padilla. Offensive rebound by Weeks, and he's fouled. I'll tell you another thing they really do well, Mike. When you take good shots, you're usually in good rebounding position. You're going to get the good second and third shots because you're going to have guys around the boxes in the offside, and they do that well. Lou Rowe, now that the cut has been uh, closed, will come back in. The last foul is on Saku Barantine out of Texarkana, Texas. He's number 45 for St. Louis. Barantine's a runner. He's got good legs. He's a backup on a junior college level, but he's been an active player, a good offensive rebound. Gives him some size for a very small team. Weeks, only the second free throw he has tried all year long, and the first he's made. Memphis leading right now. Tough not to say Memphis State, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It really is. Larry Fitch's club has really struggled this year. A lot of people thought they'd be a lot better with Vaughn and certainly Lorenzen Wright and Cedric Henderson. Weeks hit them both. There's a kid who's got to make that transition after sitting out his first year because of academics. The lead has grown to 16 with 12.50 left in the game. St. Louis knee off. Claggett had a look at a three finally and didn't, couldn't pull the trigger. Turner, nice drive and a big bucket. Good isolation one-on-one. -on -one. Turner with that penetration. But that's part of the game plan defensively. Make their perimeter people drive. Don't let them square and shoot the three. And Williams dribbling out of bounds. Look at him out of the game. He's frustrated. John Gallifari's a little fresh. Look, Michael. Now play on a defensive end. Claggett will come out of the ball game. I think that's an excellent move by Charlie Spoonar. The young man obviously forcing things. He's a great outside shooter, but it's not working for him, and you can't force it when it doesn't. Yeah, he's struggling really offensively. Can't get a rhythm. Can't get a good look at the ball. Turner wants it and gets the three. 54-43 all at once. They're right back in it. They're down 11 and the crowd is still alive. Crowd just looking for an excuse to blow the top off this brand new $170 million building. They would blow it off too. They really would. Trying to play some tough defense here. What a shot by Williams. He's amazing. Cow. He really amazes me, Mike. Whenever you think something is not there, it's not possible, he comes up with the most impossible shot. This team is an outstanding group of players, obviously well coached. They have so many weapons. It's Don't such an arsenal. And can be. On a four, was fouled. If it went, he'd have gotten the free throw on top of the three points. Not a by Williams, committed his second personal, and John Calipari has him out right away. He's going to the sideline. He better go down as far yeah. down that bench as he can get. Now Calipari's going to find him. He's going to find him. He's going to talk to him. He's going to hug him. He's going to conjole him. He's going to love him. They reverse the ball up on top. Just a little curl move. Here comes Williams. Makes contact. 
That baby almost went down, down the drain. It was almost a flush. So Turner will get three free throws. He would have a chance to cut the lead back to 10 with 11.35 to go in the game. I mean, 10 is we right in the ballpark. That's one. St. Louis should be playing Missouri. Norm Stewart, you're doing another great job this year. You're nine and one. You're doing a phenomenal job. I think Missouri should play St. Louis to kick off this season, just like Connecticut should play Massachusetts. You and I are going to be the promoters. Yeah, well, good luck negotiating those contracts, Mr. Vitale. I don't want to be in the same room with you. They would be great games for college. Oh, no, they would. They'd be marvelous. But uh, always there's one team that says, I don't have anything to gain by doing this. It's all three and the largest crowd ever to see a basketball game in your picture. There's a Christmas gift that should have been returned. <laughs> Got a 10-point game. Massachusetts leading St. Louis. 56-46. What is that? That's either you or Mr. Potato Head. Here on the left, Joe Yates of Dell Wilbur Associates, the marketing firm for this event. Judd Perkins on the right, the president of the Keel Center, with a $5,000 check from Jimmy B. To them. St. Louis needs some defense here and then a three at the other end. Forced up by Weeks. Follow won't go. Weeks got it back, puts it up again. Waldman with a rebound. Listen to this place. It just absolutely wants to explode. If that goes down, baby, oh! Just nipped the front of the net, dead on line. Every time they made the run, Mass has come up with the big play. When in doubt, just go to your PT. But he finally misses a shot. Waldman with the ball. Now they need a good shot. They can cut it to single figure. I think now you bring flag in. He saw long enough. Robinson was cutting across the lane. They finally get it to him. Clear out the side a little bit. He's working on a row. Smart move by Robinson to bring it out. There was nothing there. He would get caught in traffic. Well, he wants to take row away from the basket as well. This is Turner's shot clock at nine. Trying to get a screen and go one-on-one. Got by Travieso. Missed the shot, though, and Travieso comes up with a loose ball. Had two opportunities, Mike, and with two possessions, they really have not taken good shots. I think Charlie's got to get Claggett back on the floor. He at least has the potential to make the big shot. We have hit the 10-minute mark. Rowe backing in. I just think that's smart basketball. You're struggling a little bit. You need some point production. So you bring it to your All-American and hope he can either convert or go to the line. Foul is on Harris. Women's college basketball coming your way Sunday. The SEC women's game in Tuscaloosa between number six Vanderbilt, number 10 Alabama. That's a 5 p.m. Eastern start. Hope you'll be with us for that. Vanderbilt had number one Tennessee right on the ropes. Lost the heartbreaker. Michelle Marciniak, a transfer from Notre Dame, made the big shot for Pat Summit. Lou Rowe, 17 points, three out of three from the free throw line. Dick, I can't find anything in his game that I don't love, except maybe his range. And who cares? Yeah, that's the real question mark. Range of the shooter. All I know as a collegiate, he is a complete player. Rowe is perfect from the free throw line. The lead back at 12. And as we've said several times so far, UMass has had the answer every time for a St. Louis run. And they only have 9.49 left to keep answering. Here's Claggett. Threw away. Good save by Robinson. They're gonna try and get some screens for Claggett. Massachusetts has stepped up the intensity on defense. Kellogg right in Claggett's face, fighting over the top of screens. Shot clock's down to nine. Here's Turner. Doesn't have the match he wants. Shot clock at four. He's got to go inside. Forced it up. Came back out on him. His row again, right up on the glass with the rebound. The guys they want are not getting the shots they want when they want them. Exactly. you got to be able to define what is a good shot and make sure your number one option's getting those shots. Looking for Rowe again. He's being fronted by Harris. And they throw it over his head this time. Dante Bright, not a good pass. Tried to get a little high-low look into Rowe. They're really working hard defensively on him. you got to credit St. Louis. I mean, they're really doing a great job, I think, trying to keep the ball away from Rowe. I think they're justifying uh, 
you know, their worth in college basketball. This is certainly an 8-0 record. Maybe they're not quite that good, but they're better than a lot of people thought. They play UMass very hard. They're a good basketball Yes, they are. Like, they're going to create problems for a lot of teams, especially at home. They're playing one of the best teams in America right now. Flag it. Well, at least this time he didn't force the shot. Shot clock down to five. This has happened three times in a row. Flag it, kicks it off. Turner got it off just in time. That's the third time in a row they've taken it right down to the wire, and there's no reason for that. Good refereeing right there by Steve Weldon. Yes, it right was. on the play. Stepped on the line. 58-48. Excellent passing team. Dingle had it knocked away. Good play by Claggett. Claggett rotates over, gives some help into the post. See, losing... Losing Tamby tonight, not having Marcus Tamby, they lose, as John Calabrari spoke about, really post-presence, a special presence on the interior. Scott Highmark comes back in the ball game. He averages 13.4 points a game. He has not scored tonight. Williams with a prayer and it's answered. Williams on a perimeter row on the inside. Always seemed to come up with a big bucket. Williams has 14. The lead is 12 with 7.49 to go in the game. Carlos McCauley to clag it for three. to get that ball. Great look by Claggett. Williams, great first step. No basket, but there's a blocking foul. The crowd wanted to charge and didn't get it. Super job by Williams getting into triple threat position, facing the defender, and getting that first step, that acceleration, explosive move to the basket. That's the sixth team foul called against St. Louis will be in the bonus after this. UMass has only committed two here in the second half. You know, it's going to be really important for the Mass kids. I think they're going to have a lot of games where they're going to blow people out of the conference. And it's going to be important for them to just be concerned with team stats and not individual stats because a lot of guys are not going to get a lot of playing time when they're blowing people out. They can't worry about individual stats, but that's where the psychology of coaching comes in. Is a master in that area. Williams with that great stroke. Nickname is Uzi because he's so deadly with his shot. <laughs> I like that. Well, John Calipari said when he wants it, when he really wants to play as hard as he can, he is the best offensive player in the league. That may be going a little far. I like Lou Rowe. I'll tell you one thing. You should see him, though. I had him against North Carolina last year, this year against Maryland, and the game was on the line against the big guys. He really responds. 63-51. Highmark, nice head fake, leans into one. Oh, he just can't buy a bucket. Knocked out of bounds. It's out to St. Louis. Averaging about 14 a game. The ball was halfway down. He's drawn the Valentine sign tonight. Zero, zero, zero. Presented by Bud Light, starting with the Big East, Villanova against 10th-ranked Syracuse. And then the Big Eight, number five, Kansas against Missouri. And at midnight, number 19, Nebraska against Long Beach State. That's Big Monday, brought to you by Bud Light. Hope you join us for that. Boy, Villanova's been a little disappointment to me. I think Villanova, Wisconsin, Michigan, also, Virginia to me have been disappointments from the expectations out of the gate. Surprises. What about Clemson, Stanford? I, Iowa's been a real surprise in the Big Ten. Well, I saw Iowa play a couple of times last year, and I said, boy, these guys are going to be good, and they really have been. They are tough. The last foul was on Dante Bright, and here's another one inside. I think this is a hold on Dingle. 
Teddy Valentine with the call. They're very physical. They don't back down from anyone. Massachusetts gets right up in your face. And that was only their fourth team foul in the second half, so they still got a couple more to give. No, this has been a very physical game on both sides. Setting the screen. Like it hasn't had too many screens to get a real good look at the goal. Here's Heimark working for a shot. He leans into when he was trying to draw the foul. Couldn't get it. Got the rebound. Hey! He's on the board. Put it down quick, Mike. Get it down. Get the deuce in your records. You have to believe that Heim, uh, he was waiting for the ball to spin back out of the rim. He's had a couple that were halfway down and came out. There's the 1-1-3 one, one, now. They'd like to do a lot of things out of this. Charlie Spoonauer, a solid tactician. 63-53 with 5.45 left. Time is running out. Knocked away. And H came over to say hello. What a job this guy did at Southwest Missouri State. Challenged Kansas one year. In Five NCAA. Five in the last six years. Loves baseball. Loves the St. Louis Cardinals. Shot clock at nine. Well, I'll go with the mayor. Shot clock down to five. New Row doesn't know it. Oh, Williams at the one. There's a rebound to Dingle. That will be a foul on Dingle. St. Louis's kids really get after the basketball. They play really hard. And that's a reflection of Charlie Spoonauer, who's a people person. The people in this community love him. That would have been the backbreaker there, Dick, if they had hit a three as the shot clock was expiring. Then you put the bus, you light it up, and the baby's over. 5.23. St. Louis basketball under Charlie Spoonauer. The big story in this city has his team 8-0. and And speaking of baseball, the greatest shortstop in the history of the game, Ozzie Smith. He does things with a glove that other people never even thought of. The magician, the wizard. Ozzie Smith, they love him in St. Louis. Biggest possession of the game right here. 5-19 to go down by 10. They need a bucket. Flag it with Williams on him. Williams done a good job defensively. Flag it gets inside. Won't go for it. Got the rebound. Knocked away. Saved it. No, he was out of bounds. Jim Burr was right there to make the call. Claggett nearly made the save. Again, Dick, every time they've had a chance to really make it close. They haven't done it. They're running out of time now. Now you're getting down to Milok's time, crunch time, five minutes on the clock. They're in that 1-1-3. One, one, Form a tandem up on top. And Wolman rotates out to the basketball. There's the turnover. Dingle threw it away. Turnover. Court violation. And now John Calipari's going to argue, and the referees are going to huddle. Little John said it is. They're going to give it back to UMass. Somebody must have touched it. Let's see if there's a deflection. Yeah, there's the deflection. Yep. Deflection by Wallman. Again, good officiating as they got together. One saw the other one didn't. Right headed blocked inside. Great block by Campbell. And then Claggett lost the ball. Can't have that happen when you're down 10. And you know, you're home, Mike. You got 22,000 people. They have their star player out, Marcus Tampi. You want to be nationally rated. You got to find a way to win and take advantage of that opportunity. They have made the crowd. Oh, there it is. Touch pass in the lane, step to the gap, find the open man on a box, the little triangle. 65-53. Robinson has been quiet in the second half, as foul as he goes to the bucket. He's had a fine game, Dick. See, in that situation with the presence of Marcus Camby, you don't drive the lane. That's the dimension he adds to this basketball team. I think there's something special about having the shot block. I know that Louisville Kentucky game, Samaki Walker blocked 11 shots, and he really neutralized any kind of driving game by Kentucky. We're going to watch the ball flash in the lane. Freeze it right there. And there's the little dump down. See the vision? He's got him on the box. He lets it fly, dumps it down, touch pass. Hello. Free throw rolls tantalizingly off the rim for David Robinson. Big first half, came out of the gate, knocked down two trifectors.
missed that shot. Tipped outside. Saved. Shoot it. Shoot it. Right. Missed the three. The rebound goes to Dana Dingle. Oh, what a great change of direction. Williams missed the shot. Roll was there for the follow, but there's a foul. Foul on Williams with the drive. He's going to go to the line for two. What a great change of direction. Really made that happen. Went from the right to the left. Now here comes Williams. Now watch the change. Here's the hand. Change right to left. Head is up. Takes it up strong. Here's the contact by Highmark. First personal on Highmark, and Williams goes to the line. Cincinnati to Paul coming up tomorrow night. That's an 8.30 start as we bring you more action from the great Midwest. You think about some of the great wins. John Calipari to me has had three really programmed, unbelievable wins. 92 beating Syracuse in the NCAA East Regionals. 93 beating North Carolina when they were number one in the NIT preseason. And 94 kicking off the season, beating the number one team in America, Arkansas, with five starters returning. That was a remarkable performance there. Highmark forces one up. to get the break 67 55 he deserved that one right there now they've got to do it with their defense well right now massachusetts against the trap is going to put somebody in a post they're going to go to the foul line and carl turner very dejectedly brings the ball back he had a great story, Charlie Spoonauer, last night about his days as a manager back at a high school level. I mean, he just, he was not a player. I mean, many of these guys, I was teasing him at the luncheon today. I said, take a look at these guys. You talk about Cupcake City. I mean, right here, a guy from Ozarks, Calipari, Clarion State, Mike Dean, Potsdam State. Well, guys who are great players traditionally make terrible coaches. John Chaney was from the food coaching, but he was a player. Yeah. He was a player. He never got really the chance in his era. The African-American never had that opportunity back there in those days. 68-55, still reachable with 3.27 to go, but they need to hit everything from here on out. Now the defense is even extended more, taking away the three. Robinson kicks it back out to Turner. Highmark kept it alive, and a great save by Jeff Harris. Highmark. to go. Always gets to 10, and then they come up with the big play. Lewis and Rowe finally answers. And credit Robinson on that for keeping the ball alive and going down to the floor to get it back. Watch them go to Rowe now. They know they need a big basket. Use some time and take advantage of their number one option. Shot clock at 12. There's Rowe. They'll try to double team him. Kellogg with a miss. Right commits a silly foul over the back. Now, that's not the kind of execution they would like in that sequence. They really don't get their top option of basketball for a score. Bright commits his fourth and has to sit down. Played on one of the great high school teams of all time with Keith Boot. Also, Michael Lloyd. Seven points on the night for Scott Highmark after he had struggled all night without being able to score. Connecticut looks for real life. They look like they are so legitimate. If you look at Connecticut and Syracuse right now and Georgetown in the Big East. That league is going to be by by St. John's with that big win over Providence on the road. What about the coaching news? I couldn't believe it. Rich Kotai gets the Jets jump. The guy has one year. It's remarkable. One Keith year. Keith Olbermann and Dan Patrick standing by to bring you uh, today on everything in sports. Nearly the steal for Robinson. 68-60. Finally got it under 10. Rowe puts it right back. You can shoot that facing jump shot, Mike. There's an example. They need the big bucket. They clear out. They, they get need the threes now, Dick Turner. In and out. Harris kept it alive, but it's pulled down by Kellogg. This has not been an easy game for Massachusetts. I don't care what the point spread is. They've had to come to play against this tenacious basketball team. St. Louis has made them work. Kellogg, very good ball handler. Nothing fancy.
but you don't get it away from him. Keeps his head up at all times, draws the contact, and gets the foul from Waldman. And what do you want from a guy late in the game who's handling the ball? You want him to be a good free throw shooter. 92.9 is Kellogg. That's not bad. That was your great point average. But it was Dan Patrick. <laughs> Dan Patrick was a 92 point student. I was a 92.9 on a 200 scale. <laughs> I was out about a 300 scale. My daughter makes up for me. Mike, can I brag? You will Certainly. believe this. I found out today. I can't believe my daughter Terry had a 4.0 at Notre Dame in the graduate school. Unbelievable. I know where her mom, what side of the family the mind oh, came she from. She gets all the intelligence from her mom. You can count on that. Not from her dad. My two girls have done well academically. Not because of her dad. I was a dummy. Kellogg hits the first one. He'll get another. The lead is 11. He's made 14 out of 15 this year. Now make it 15 out of 16. That's the kind of guy you'd like on the line at the end of the game. And as you say, he's going to have the ball in his hands a great deal. That's a screen for Claggett. Needs it badly. Wouldn't go for him. Offensive rebound, Harris. Harris really working hard. Defensively on the offensive boards. They get the timeout. I'll tell you one thing. They really played hard, and they didn't really disappoint a lot of people. In Tonight, uh, they're not in town yet, but... It sure won't take long. Well, I got a stadium already, according to uh, Charlie Spooner last night. It's almost done. The Dome Stadium in town. 1.33 to go. And St. Louis has come close several times tonight. Just can't get that critical basket, it seems, to break through. And that's a credit to Massachusetts playing against nearly 22,000 on the road. And coming without your star player, your big guy. And you still respond to the challenge. Hey, you talk about athletic ability. You ready for this? They keep a dunk -a meter a record of all their dunks. St. Louis had three dunks coming into this game. Great ball movement. Rowe had it taken away by Walton. Here comes Claggett. They're desperate for the three. with a minute and nine to go. Hey. Nick, you and I have been doing this long enough. We have seen this happen time and time again, especially with the advent of the three-point shot. A steal here, a turnover there, a mistake there, and all at once, a 10-point lead disappears, and you're ahead by two. It's gone quickly. There's no doubt about it. Scott gets all high marks. He was 4.0 in the classroom, and right now he gets a 4.0, but knocking down the jumper from Charlie Spoonhour. That's spoon ball, baby. Three-point time. Trifector time. High mark for all the struggles and all the missed shots that were halfway down and came back out for him. That hot lead. Now has 12 points, and you got to give the kid a lot of credit. That some, hung in there. That's right, because some guys will disappear on you when they've had a tough night. They don't want to make it any worse. Certainly when he gets down to the last two minutes, they don't want to take a big shot. But this kid has stepped up. That well, makes some guts. He's got character. When you're a 4.0 student, that tells you you got a little bit of character. He knows his priorities are in order. He's a tough, tenacious competitor, both in the classroom and on the court. Teddy Valentine, speaking of high mark, he takes the message over to Charlie Spoonhour. Why can't we put a little more time on that clock? Why can't we put just a little bit more time? 109. Oh, they want it. The crowd wants it. Oh, they want it, baby. They want it. The official <laughs> attendance tonight, 21,890. It wouldn't surprise me if they sneaked a few others in here. That's paid. What about all the freebies hanging around? Well, I got to make the fire marshal look the other way. Comes down to free throw shooting now. Foul was on high mark. I still think Massachusetts and Arkansas are the two best teams in America. I know Arkansas, they were beaten by Mississippi. Remember this, you go to Hawaii and you play the likes of Oklahoma, Cincinnati, and Iowa, come back with wins, your legs get a little heavy in that travel. Here's the guy you want to foul. Dingle shoots 57.1%. The only one of the starters who is not an outstanding free throw shooter. He's a tough defensive player, good offensive rebounder. Looked good on that stroke. Didn't he ever? So many guys are different late in the game if you were to chart them versus a blowout situation. Sports Center, that dynamic duo, Keith Overman, Dan Patrick getting ready. 
single hits them both. Takes a little pressure off 74 65. Three possessions. Here comes Claggett. They got four guards in there now. Claggett goes to the basket, missed the shot. Padilla is mugged underneath. They hug him. Look at Kellogg. He hugs him. We got a W. Let's go, guys. Play by Kellogg. Yeah, Kellogg comes here. in. Make sure he doesn't do anything stupid like swing an elbow exactly. and get a technical. They Smart love play. They love playing with each other. You watch them in practice. These kids really enjoy competing, enjoy playing with each other. But that's what winning does. Winning becomes contagious. It makes it fun. It's tough to go to the gym every day when you lose about 14 in a row. Believe there, me, I know. There are a lot more close friends on winning teams than there are on losing teams. <laughs> up back there that one but they give him a high five a little tap on a rear end from michael williams it's okay don't worry about it we got three guards we got Padilla. we got you we got Kellogg. we're all on a court together we can handle the rock it's the second the lead is back to 10. this is turner he can shoot it waldman has to force one up there's no time to wait they're going to drive some teams bananas with the three teams that are to be able to respond with good solid perimeter defense dick I, I think what you told me earlier this afternoon when you said uh, what john calipari's game plan was going to be for this has really come true the fact that he said we've got to challenge all those three-point shots because this is the way these people are going to beat us if we do that they're not going to win he spoke to them a little bit about today at practice north carolina state his first address was about the fact that just take a look last night what the three-point shot is done it's revolutionized college basketball it has made the underdog a real threat on given nights and it was certainly seen yesterday in that game with nc state and north carolina the way they live off the three with claggett and highmark and wallman and turner they're going to create a nightmare for clubs because clubs aren't going to have the perimeter defense that mass has absolutely and especially if they can get performances like they did tonight out of robinson inside as a great compliment to that outside game well they've got the lead to seven with 50.8 seconds to go and Spoonball, no matter what happens tonight, is alive and well at Keel in, her, in St. Louis. Very Here's well. three-point shooting. They've hit 50% in the second half, and UMass has only tried three. They really made a good effort here tonight against a really solid basketball team. There was a couple of times it looked like they could really be put away into a blowout, and they responded and got back in the game. The inbound came to row. He was fouled. They're coached to do that. See how they sprint together down to the foul line. North Carolina for years has done that. Sprint, we're a team. Let's get away from down here. Let's enjoy it. Do what we have to do. Get on a bus. Fly home. Look at the bench. Look at the togetherness. And he went to France. Good cultural experience. Went out to France and played. Unique situation out there, Mike. They played games. It was 20-minute games. I couldn't believe it. John Calipari was telling us, he said, we went out there, we played two of the games, with 20-minute games, and then we played a 40-minute game against a team from Italy. Some outstanding Americans out there, David Rivers, Michael Ray Richardson. Rowe hits them both. A little jump stop. Rowe with a rebound, and he'll be fouled by Heim time rebounder. I mean, he's a glass eater. He's a Windex man. Calipari had a great line. He said it took us less time flying back from Paris, coming back home, than it did getting to St. Louis because they flew back on a Concorde. Unbelievable. Flew back on a Concorde, the entire team. I said, that ought to be costly. Great experience. Well, they went to the Eiffel Tower. A great learning experience for the young kids. They were there five days. Lost all three games, three tough games, but humbled them. Made it come back and work a little harder. Said the officiating was a little bit questionable. Hey, 
Where is the coach going to tell you the officiating was terrific? <laughs> Lou Rowe with 27 points tonight. And not easy points. I mean, he's had no. guys in his face, all up on him, but that is responding as an All-American. Your buddy's not here, your star teammate, and you respond. And no matter how much pressure he's been under on those shots, he makes them so smooth. Claggett had it blocked by Williams, got it back. Oh, talk about a response. I love the way he tickles the twine. 79-71. They go after Rowe, commit the foul with 22.3 seconds to go. He's going to get a shot at the big-time level because he has that shot. There is no, believe me, substitute for guys that can tickle the twine. Too many guys are bricklayers, and you're not going to convert them to make them into shooters. Just like guys that are 190 hitters, 200 hitters, they can work in a batting cage all day, and they'll improve eight to nine points, but they're not going up to hit 300. Yeah, but 190 hitters still make a million dollars a year. A million? Like maybe <laughs> two million. They're in your class, baby. There's Claggett. He squares it down. Claggett bags it. Row up the free throw line, 80 to 71. Missed the second shot. It was nearly tipped in by Harris. Still a three-possession game right here. Claggett can cut it to six. people on their feet at the end of this game and the players hugging and shaking hands with each other as Spoonauer and Calipari do the same. What a great effort. What a tremendous finish. You, you understand that if they hit that shot after the steal, they cut it to three with about eight seconds to go. That would have just been a remarkable finish to this ball game. Unbelievable effort. I think the effort was super by both clubs. I think Massachusetts had an unbelievable challenge facing him. Coming here, winning without Marcus Camby, with 22,000 people, a team that really believes in itself, yet they get the W, but a great effort by St. Louis. They didn't have any quit in them. Sports Center coming up later this evening. And our final here, 80 to 74, Massachusetts over St. Louis. Great game from here, Chris Fowler. All right, Mike and Dick, thank you very much. Sports Center coming up in just a couple of minutes. Now there are only five unbeaten teams in major college ball, two of them still in action. Dick's right, impressive win for UMass. No can be tough crowd to get it done. Lou Rowe steps up, gets it done with the big points inside. The paint points were important for Mass all night long. But St. Louis, if they shot the threes earlier, it could have been a different game. First half, they just had that drought. Yeah, frustrating night for Irwin Claggett. A lot of turnovers. Winning a streak, a four-point lead at home over Providence. Number three and number five went down this afternoon. Iowa State scoring the last 10 points again.